Hi, I'm George Self. This video is one in a series designed to help with Logisim Evolution Digital Logic Labs. This is Lab 5, Vending Machine Simulator. This is a complex project that's intended to simulate a vending machine. Let's take a look at the completed circuit. When this vending machine is operational, a service person can come along and restock, say, product number one. And when we click, automatically, we just say there are 15 items for product one. I can restock product two, and for the time being, I'll leave product three empty. Notice there are three sold out lights. Product three is sold out because there are no products available there. However, product one and two both have products, so the sold out light does not function there. I will enable this machine. Now, if I drop a nickel into the slot, notice that a nickel shows up there. I can drop a dime in and it'll automatically add those two together. Let me drop in a quarter and another quarter. Now this machine is set up so that every product is dispensed at 75 cents. So I've got 65 in now. Let me drop in another quarter. It shows that 90 cents has been deposited, but I'll receive 15 cents change. Well, because I've deposited more than uh, 75 cents, I can select product well, let me start with product three and nothing happens uh, because product three is sold out if i select product one though notice that product one is now decreased in number and you may not have noticed but very briefly this dispense one uh, led lit which indicates to me that the machine actually dispensed one of these products I'm going to take a look at this circuit. However, let me just reset everything for now. I'm going to take a look at this circuit and explain what's going on here. The student file that you download, the starter file, actually has a fairly complete circuit already there. Oh, there are three problems with the circuit that I'll point out to you, but it's fairly complete. I want to start, I think, first with the bank sub-circuit. This is where the money is deposited and totaled. So you'll see we have an input for a nickel, a dime, and a quarter. There's an enable and a reset. The enable simply turns on this priority encoder and uh, this uh, uh, D flip-flop. Reset will reset the D flip-flop back to zero. And what happens is this. If I deposit a nickel by clicking a push button that's attached to this input, the priority encoder is first. Uh, it, the priority encoder will uh, send a signal out to this multiplexer. The multiplexer then sends a 05 number out to this adder. The adder then is fed into the D flip flop. The D flip flop is activated. Um, Whenever this, whenever there's a coin drop through this OR gate, it will activate this flip-flop. The flip-flop then will add a nickel to its contents. That nickel will be output as uh, the accumulated amount. It's also fed back into this adder. So when I deposit another nickel, this adder now will have 10, or will have 10 cents going into the D flip-flop. So let's take a look next at the, um, I think I want to take a look next at the product. No, I think I'll take a look at the dispenser. And the reason I'm doing this is because notice there are three product sub-circuits. And I want you to see what these product sub-circuits are doing. Then we'll actually take a look at the product sub-circuit. What's going on inside this? box. So this is our dispenser. This is what dispenses the product. First, there's an activate signal. When it's high, then that activate signal goes into this DMUX. The DMUX will choose 
whether Vend 1, Vend 2, or Vend 3 is pushed, this DMUX, uh, this priority encoder will select a line for the DMUX, and the DMUX will send that active signal to one of these three product uh, containers. The restock uh, input is again a push button that goes to each of these products. It will automatically restock those products with 15 items. The output of this product is an empty signal if there are no products available and a dispensed signal if something is actually dispensed. Finally, we do have an available number of products coming out of each of these three sub-circuits. So let's take a look at the product sub-circuit and see what's going on in here. First, I have a counter. Now the counter is going to contain the number of products available to vend. I'll start here with the restock input. Whenever somebody pushes that restock button, it will automatically reset this counter with this number, F, which is 15. Remember that uh, all of our digital logic circuits count zero as a number. So from F to zero would be 15 products. Coming out of this counter then, Oh, let me also point out, whenever the VEND is pushed, this goes to this uh, subtractor. It's set up to subtract, and the counter will subtract one number from whatever its contents are. Coming out of this counter, there's an empty uh, LED or an empty port whenever the counter is empty. And that's simply one of the outputs of the counter. Also, the counter's output goes through a, bi a binary to a BCD uh, converter. And you can find binary to BCD in this BFH mega functions, a binary to BCD. So I've put one of these in there in order to make the output easier for humans to read. And that's about it with this product sub-circuit. It's basically just a counter with a couple of gates wired up. Next, let's take a look at the activator. The activator is what turns on the circuit so that the customer can select a product. We have the amount of cash coming in here. If it's at least 75 cents, and I have, I have done that by setting up this comparator, 4B is binary 75. So when the input is 75 cents, this equal sign, then the activate will go high. If it's greater than 75 cents, the activate signal will go high. But also then that will activate this MUX. So the total cash in will be subtracted from 75. And that will drive this uh, binary to BCD uh, converter, which will show us the change due. Also, as the cash is deposited, that simply is fed into a binary to BCD converter, and we see how much money is converted. So the major part of this sub-circuit is this activate signal, which will turn on the dispenser area. Well, let's take one more look at dispenser. So now you can see here, this activate signal is used to activate one of these products. And this is the product. Okay. And that activate comes in here uh, as, a, as a vend. All right, let's take a look now at the vending circuit. I think this is the only one that we haven't done yet. This is where we put all of these things together. Notice the dispenser is the largest sub-circuit. We've put together uh, all of these three uh, product uh, containers. We have the activator and we have the bank. All of these sub-circuits are simply dropped in here as a main circuit. Then this vending sub-circuit is what we drop onto main. And this is where we get our human interface. Notice we have the amount of money deposited, the change returned, the level of the products. We have all of the various inputs and all of the outputs. And that's how this 
circuit works. Now I have reset the circuit. I'm going to point out three problems with this circuit that you need to correct. And that's your challenge for this lab. First, I'm just going to input some money. Notice now I've input more than 75 cents. It says some change should be returned. But if I click Vend 1, it still shows uh, 85 cents and 10 cents returned if I click it again. And as a customer, I can just keep vending product without inputting any more money. Now the customer may like that, but of course the owner of the machine is not going to be very happy. So what we need to do is set up, uh, correct this circuit so when someone clicks vend, the amount of money deposited will reset to zero that will inactivate this, uh, this vend line and the change will actually be returned to the customer. The next problem is the customer has deposited 85 cents. If they click on 10 again, now they've deposited 95 cents. Well, that might make the machine owner happy that the customer can keep putting money in, but the customer is not going to like that. So we need to set up this circuit so that there's a stop once 75 cents has been deposited and the customer can't keep putting money into this machine. There's one other requirement in your lab. We want this circuit to also display a total amount of money deposited. That way when the service technician goes in to service the machine, that technician will know that, oh I don't know, $20 has been deposited and they can count the amount of money in the, in the coin can there and see if it comes out to $20. It's simply a check on the system. So we do need to have some kind of a total amount of money deposited. Now I'm going to show you on my system how that may look. This was my solution. Yours can look different. It's all right. Notice here's the amount deposited. Here's the change and here's the total amount that has been deposited and then the amount of each product. Everything else looks about the same. That's about it for this lab. Good luck with it. As always, if you get hung up somewhere, don't get too frustrated. Ask me for help and I'll be glad to do that. I'll be seeing you online.